All right, so with Black Adam, we now have 12 DCEU movies. I got my phone here because today we are going to rank the DCEU movies. This is Letterbox right here. My Letterbox name is Zach Movie Chat YT. Why don't you go ahead and go give me a follow while you're hitting the subscribe button on my YouTube channel. But for the DCEU, it's not a franchise that I love. I wouldn't even say I like the franchise, but I am a superhero fan. I will be excited for every new DCEU movie, even though I know that it will probably be bad. So I do watch them all, I've seen them all. I have not seen Zack Snyder's Justice League though. I am saving that for, I think I will be able to watch it by Shazam Fury of the Gods when I rank them again. But yeah, so this is my DCEU ranking. I want you guys to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, comment down below. What is your ranking of the DCEU movies? What do you feel about the franchise as a whole? I'll tell you my personal opinions in a minute, but I want to just want to know your ranking, what your opinions on each of these films are. And with that said, so the DCEU as a whole was something, this was the first thing superhero that I've ever watched. I watched this with my grandpa. I sat down, we were going to watch the MCU, but then in the end, we decided to watch the DCEU. And so I sat down and I watched the entire DC Extended Universe, and as a whole, I used to say I love the franchise, but re-watching them, I realized that the most films are mediocre. In fact, the only top two were films that I would say I really loved, but this is how I rank them, and even though this is not a great franchise, I'll still look forward to the next movie and then the next movie after that, because I am a superhero mega fan, and so, yeah, so let's get into this last place, Wonder Woman 1989, or 1984, I always get the two numbers confused, but when you get into this one, if you talked to me from 2020, right as I was starting my YouTube channel, I was like the nicest guy ever, I was like, ah yeah, I'm just gonna be nice to films, because people make these movies, I'm gonna try to just enjoy them and not be critical, but every time I rewatch this movie, what were they thinking? Making Steve Trevor be in this guy's body and then making uh, Maxwell Lord turn into The Rock and <laughs> it's just so confusing. The ideas that they got here, they were just not good ones. It's like, it's like a Halloween Ends case and that's what I'm going to call these cases from here on out. They're Halloween Ends cases where from the beginning of the film we get this weird idea and we realize that's the direction it's going on and it, it just puts a very sour taste and taste in your mouth because this idea of all this happening it's really weird and of course the cgi isn't even good it's like they didn't have a budget because like the scenes where wonder woman's flying they're terrible they look like someone put up a stock photo of air and had wonder woman go Looked like it's from the 70s. It looked god awful. And in the end, that's what the movie proves to be. Is pretty. It, it's a pretty bad movie. Then we got Justice League. And just so you know, this would probably be. I would say this would be right before Man of Steel on this ranking. I would probably put it right there. And you'll see where Man of Steel is in a minute. Because as a movie, as a whole, the movie is a movie, it's a pretty decent film. Because, sure, it's got all the behind the scenes drama, we will talk about that in a minute. But, you know, it's got this basic format, heroes get together, they fight villains, it's basic. And the time where I almost finished Zack Snyder's Justice League, I used to think this one was a better film. But if I'm putting it this low because of what DC has done to Zack Snyder. You see that Zack Snyder was this director who had a vision. And I do not like the Snyderverse. Not coming out here saying that Snyderverse is good. I do not like it at all. But at least Snyder had a vision. And so his daughter, well, she unalived herself. I don't want to get copyright or any issues with YouTube in this video, but you know what she did. And so then Zack Snyder had to step away from the project. And then so Joss Whedon came in here and they made the movie under two hours. They messed with his vision. And even though this kind of film where it's a basic film, it's got the basic things that you'd expect every superhero movie to have, just this behind the scenes drama and what actually happened you can't say that it's good. You gotta despise it because of the, what they have ruined. They completely ruined 
Zack Snyder's vision with this film, and it, it's just a dis very distasteful thing. Then we got Batman v Superman, Donna Justice, and the Snyderverse, I do not like. In fact, the three Snyder movies, which is Justice League, Batman v Superman, and Man of Steel, they're all in my bottom five in this franchise. And for this one, it's got a... It's got the burden of being a Civil War type movie where the two lead characters of your franchise are going to clash at it throughout the entire film. And it's got that burden of being the second film in this entire franchise. And so that can be a bit weird. And sometimes it's got decent world building. Upon rewatching, I sit back and I think this got decent world building at least. It shows that Kryptonite is around the world. It shows how that happens. And it shows that Snyder has a villain. Or it shows that Snyder has a vision. But here's the thing. The film is boring. It goes nowhere until the end where there's some pretty cool action sequences. But it pretty much put me to sleep when I'm rewatching it because like, mm, yeah, we get this world building. But for a three hour film, we don't get anything else. And the point of a DC movie or a superhero movie is that's supposed to be jam packed with action. And that's the thing. Man of Steel, like we'll talk about in just a minute, Man of Steel does not have this big slow burn in for the whole film it starts out in the first act but that's got a bunch of action this one has no action it's like they cannot find the pacing Zack Snyder does not know how to pace a superhero movie and especially with this one it doesn't work because it has a burden of all these things but it also tries to be this big second film and then it kills off Superman which doesn't even really feel earned just this entire film is kind of it's kind of a weird choice to be the second one, but sure, it's got some cool world building. I just feel bored every time I rewatch it. And then we move on to Black Adam, the latest superhero DCEU film. And that's because Black Adam is, for the most part, it hits every beat, right? It's a fun superhero movie. I really enjoyed it when Black Adam and the JSA were bamming it out. That was really fun, the big action sequences. When they were sitting along in a room talking, all that really worked. But then by the end of the film, it kind of gets a bit too long, and then our main villain's a demon for like the third DCEU film, and I'm sitting back and I'm just like, that's a bit dull. I don't really feel like the film could fully round it out. And throughout the entire film, I was like, yeah, that's fine. It's just mainly nails it to be a mediocre superhero movie. So a mediocre superhero movie that's really strong and its characters are front and center, that's exactly what you need a superhero film to do, is have good characters, and this one did. But then you get to the demon, and that kind of ruined Black Adam because it kind of showed us like, oh, he's a superhero. But then he's now a super villain because he wants to kill Superman. I don't get it. I don't understand the ideas that they had here to make Black Adam kind of this anti-hero, but now he wants to be the biggest villain in the world? It doesn't work, and it very much shows the bad world building in the case of the DCEU, because apparently after the Justice League fought uh, Steppenwolf, they're world-renowned heroes. It makes no sense. It doesn't come back around. This world building is truly bad, and it shows in this movie. And sure, while the characters were on screen when they were clashing out, that was when the movie was at its best, Black Adam is certainly not a great superhero movie, and it definitely has its flaws. And once I left the theater, I felt like, mm, yeah, sour taste in my mouth, just like a lot of these films. Man of Steel, Zack Snyder's, uh, Zack Snyder's first film in this franchise, and I gotta say, it's interesting because it kind of starts out as a slow burn movie. It's got this interesting look on Superman's life. It basically shows exactly what I think a Superman movie should be. This exact kind of origin because at, that really works. And then we get the building up to the action. It builds up, it builds up. Middle of the film, big action sequence. Nothing in between. Action, action, action to the point where it kind of gets dull. And that's a problem with this movie. I enjoyed sitting back and watching uh, whatever his name is, Zod and Superman clash it out. That was a part of this film that I had a blast with. 
But then I sit back and I'm like, that's all this movie was. Zack Snyder does not know how to pace a superhero movie. When we go back to Batman v Superman, we think that Zack Snyder paced that movie as kind of like a slow burn until we get to the ending, no action in the middle. And then we get to this movie, it's all action and all the slow burn stuff does not fit. And that's fine. The more I think about this movie, I realize it's no Iron Man. It doesn't start a big franchise. But it is a fine movie. It kind of works in a way to kind of set up the character of Superman, have this big clash. It really just should have been paced better. And, you know, when I look at this lineup of DCEU movies, when I look at all these DCEU movies, the more I think about Man of Steel, the, the next time I watch it, I'm always sitting back and I'm like, yeah, it's nice to go back to the basics. It's nice to see what Zack Snyder had as a vision before all this worked. So, this is a movie that really just gets better in time, and it really did get better in time with this one, but sitting back, I really think, like, Zack Snyder really needs to learn how to pace superhero movies. Then we got Wonder Woman, and now that I think of it, Wonder Woman should definitely be a spot higher. This is just a classic war film, kind of. It, just exactly what I'd expect a superhero movie like this to be. Girl meets boy, they go on an adventure, big twist happens. It's cheesy cinema, it's fun, it's fine. Wonder Woman has cool action sequences. The ending action sequence with uh, Ares, I am one of the people who will not say that that is bad. I always enjoy that sequence. There's just fun moments. They all got great chemistry. It's just a fun movie. Patty Jenkins, it's fun to watch this movie and sit back and realize, oh, and then we got Wonder Woman 1984, where she has some weird man who pretends to be Steve Trevor. It's all weird, and it doesn't really balance itself up. But this one, it's nice to go back to the basics. It's nice to see what the original DCEU could have been when it's just films like this that are very fun to watch. And like I said, it really needs to be, I really need to put it higher on my list because next up we got Suicide Squad. Not the Suicide Squad, you'll see where that is. But Suicide Squad. And this one's special to me because I watched this with my grandpa. I wasn't allowed to watch this. I don't, I'm still not allowed to watch this movie for some odd reason. I don't remember there being anything wrong in it. But we sat down and we're like, okay, we got three hours. My mom's not here, we're gonna watch this movie. And it was the first time I've ever watched this movie and I had a blast with it. And that was all the way back in like 2017, five years ago. So I was young, I barely remember it. But the more I think about the movie, the more I watch videos of people describing it, I can totally see where their problems had. There's a bunch of music, there's a bunch of, um, plane crashes especially so I can totally see where that is but I think it's just a memory of me and him watching it and having fun watching it and there's some cool action sequences it it's just this movie that little old me really enjoyed and I have not rewatched it since so I don't really got a comment on this one but I really probably should rewatch it because old Suicide Squad if I rewatch you you're probably gonna suck oh yeah and I got a comment on Jared Leto's Joker not good <laughs> he's not good and then, of course, we got Peacemaker kicking off our top five in the DCEU. Now, Peacemaker was a show that for the first half of it, I just could not get into. I was sitting back, I was like, yeah, I don't like this. I don't like this. Kept watching it. I don't like this. I don't like this. Then we get to episode, I believe it was five, where the show starts to pick up. Um, James Gunn starts getting his world building. He finally starts making these characters interesting. We got action sequences, we got an alien invasion, and it really made me really like this character of Peacemaker because for the first half of the show, it was kind of just like this, oh, very crass humor, very inappropriate jokes, nothing really fun. It really, really picks up steam. It's this kind of show that you wish it had more seasons because you wish you could spend more time with these characters. By the end of the show, there are emotions. The characters here are very they have very emotional moments you don't want these characters to die in the final battle and then it rounds it all out with a joke about the justice league of course i love this john cena fantastic in the role everyone was fantastic in these roles uh peacemakers interactions with vigilante the best james gunn we can really craft characters throughout a show and that's what really stands here and of course we got the basic superhero stuff action humor everything that it movie should have and so i cannot wait for peacemaker season two james gunn really made a fantastic show here 
And then we got Birds of Prey. And this is another one my brother used to have baseball practice in the New York City, which is an hour away. And my mom had to work all night. So I was home by myself I was for like six hours every Friday night. I was sitting down and I was like, what's a movie to watch? Oh, they're not going to be home. Let's watch Birds of Prey. Was not allowed to watch it. And so I had a blast watching this one. Not only is this bright and cheery and the characters are fun and there are fun action sequences, but I just had a blast with this one. Ewan McGregor as the Black Mask was really fun. He is a very dangerous character. The scene where he cuts off people's faces, that is just disturbing. He gets to be this crazy character that is really fun and then you get here and people are saying oh it's all about woman's rights I don't even really see anything sure Harley Quinn has her problems with the Joker because it's a Joker and we got to get rid of Jared Leto but of course and all these characters are pretty neat and it's cool because we got Mary Elizabeth Weinstead as the Huntress one of my favorite DC characters and she's not a great adaption but I really like Mary Elizabeth Weinstead as well ever since I saw 10 Cloverfield Lane this cast here just is a bunch of fun this is the kind of DC EU movie that we need to have more of where it's not some huge event, but it's a movie that they could just drop to add onto the universe and it could be fun. This is the nearest comparison to Ant-Man, where this is just a fun DCEU movie that doesn't really feel like the rest of the franchise is just interconnected movie after interconnected movie. This movie is just there for the sake of being fun. Kind of like Shazam. Now for Shazam, the superhero stuff in here didn't really please me. I was sitting back while watching the superhero aspects of the movie and from the beginning on, I just could not get invested in it. And I, I really should have because it's all done really well, but I couldn't have got invested in it. I don't even think I would have liked this movie if they didn't cast Zachary Levi as Shazam. Him playing a 11? No, I don't know how old the kid is, but him playing a kid is absolutely hilarious. There are hilarious moments here with him and his friend, and sure, it goes the beat that you'd expect the kind of teen comedy to go, but it all really works because Zachary Levi's here, and by the end of the movie where we get all the Shazams, that is also really fun because they all just play these kid characters as adults and it just can that's really what carries the movie and then by the end of the film i was invested in the superhero stuff the action started to mend well for me there was some comedic comedy comedic moments in this movie and i had i just had a blast with this one this is one of the movies that feel like it should have been in here right in this place i really had fun with it i i watched this in my grandma's lake house with my grandma it was pretty fun and for the longest time, I wasn't allowed to watch it because I heard there was a strip club scene in it. The strip club scene was the best part. Don't take that out of context. You don't actually see the inside of it. But I just had a blast with this movie. It can really prove to be one of the better DCEU movies. And here when we get to the absolute greatest of the great, we got Aquaman. And in case you were, were counting, we only got two movies left. And so... It's kind of saying something about this franchise that only two movies are absolutely perfect. And the first the, the first out of those two is Aquaman. James, not James, um, that's his name. I forgot his name for a minute, guys. Jason Momoa is great as Aquaman. He has a nice interaction with everyone. Amber Heard, of course, we gotta talk about Amber Heard. We don't have to talk about her. We're just gonna disregard her. Sure, it's got some beats to Ant-Man. It's familiar, it feels like Ant-Man, not Ant-Man, it feels like Black Panther at times. It's got the same story, pretty much the exact same story. But this film can be fun, and I watched this with a bunch of my friends. My best friend and half of his family, actually, all went to this movie, and his whole family is, are just a group of my friends. And so we all went to the cinema on my... 13th birthday I believe to watch this movie and I really enjoy it it's not only does it have the basic simplicities of a normal superhero movie plot but it's got the action Black Manta is cool it's a very funny comedy and it's got a nice story here to be in throughout the movie this is just a movie that I'll always just turn on and I'll just watch it's that good it's that good of a DCEU movie it's got very fond memories of me I've got very fond memories of it it's just a special movie to me that I genuinely love as a whole. This is just one of the best DCEU movies and one of the best movies of 2018. But, of course, because I'm not an uncivilized being, we gotta put 
the Suicide Squad at number one. The Suicide Squad, of course. Because The Suicide Squad is a James Gunn movie. And James Gunn movies are awesome. He always has these characters. And he they perfectly crafted the characters here to where you don't want any of them to die. And for, from the first scene of the movie, you get a bunch of characters dying. And that's just how you really start the movie. Is by killing off characters. And instead of pulling a Guardians of the Galaxy where he takes all these unlikely characters and pulls them together. He starts off by killing people to where you know anyone can die. And anyone does die die it's like dc set down like james gunn take the realms and now james gunn is in the realms of the universe which makes me excited because james gunn is a perfect director he makes perfect characters and all this cast they have great interactions there's great action sequences especially blood sport and peacemaker they all got excellent chemistry i just sit down and i absolutely love this movie because it's got excellent world building, excellent action, excellent everything a superhero movie should be because it is a James Gunn movie. It's perfect. And that is why it is number one on my DCEU ranking. So I got a couple of videos coming out. It depends on when I upload this. I'm filming this at the same time I do my See Where They Run and Don't Worry Darling combined in view or combined review. And so it's, I'm unsure. I'm probably going to post that one first. So there's that one right there, but I also got a Cobra Kai ranking. I also got a ranking on the Spickle Me franchise. I also got a lot of videos coming up. It's catch up November and I'm barely catching up. I probably should have uploaded several other videos this week, but here's a couple of videos right here, starting with the DCEU ranking. So please, as always, comment down below. What did you think of these franchise? What is your ranking? And as always, make sure to subscribe, join the Nerd Army. Peace out.